make an opening statement, and then we'll go ahead and open it up some questions after that. Coach? Yeah, I mean, we knew it was going to be tough to come in here and win. They're, they're, they're programmed with a lot of pride here recently that, you know, in dire need of a win, obviously getting Sharif uh, eligible to play, help, help everything about them. I mean, he makes them a completely different team. So I thought it showed a lot of character for our guys to come in here. I mean, we had zero days of preparation. We didn't find out he was playing for sure until this morning, shortly before the game. We had an idea maybe last night. So... We didn't, re, we, didn't, we didn't plan for him at all. He changes the entire way they play. You know, we didn't have anybody that did a great job defensively on him, to be honest with you, but I thought our guys pulled together. I think we got the last five stops to get, or the last five possessions on our defensive end. We got stops. We had some big steals, deflections. We had some huge old boards. The uh, put back by Petty, I thought was a game winning play. That, that it was huge. You know, I think Bruner had some putbacks. Our guys, you know, Shaq kept the one alive that Bruner got. So, I think our guys are learning how to win close games, it's something we uh, had struggled with last year. Now guys are making tough plays down the stretch. I'm, I'm happy for them. And then Primo, obviously, you can't say enough about the start that he gave us. You know, he came out ready to play. He had been struggling a little bit. He got his mind together and really, I'm sure he played the best game he's played since he's been here. So we picked a great time to do it. You know, without Quinterly now, we've had multiple guys step up. Keon Ellis was great against Florida. Primo was great here. And, uh, Kind of everybody's figuring out how to win. I thought Shaq's second half, you know, he didn't have a very good first half, struggled a little bit, but came out really ready to go in the second half. It shows a lot of maturity for him to uh, be able to do that after the first half that he had. Hey, Coach. Um, it's Cecil. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, I can see um, Cecil. Okay. Um, in the stretch in the second half, when it seemed like the teams were trading baskets back and forth, the tempo had really elevated. Um, Bruner hits two threes. He he gets a put back. Uh, what did he What did he give you in the second half? He ended up with twenty points. I mean, he, he was huge, especially that last probably eight minutes. The uh, threes he hit, the putbacks he had. He had a big block. He had some. Uh, kind of anchors the defense with his talk at times playing their center. I think, you know, we, he gives us what we were looking for. You know, he had to get comfortable in the offense. I think he got comfortable, picked a great time to show up big. And I, I thought those last eight to 10 minutes, uh, you know, he went three of six from three. Him and Primo both go 50% from three. So, you know, but even more than that, that the offensive rebounds, you know, he got some and ones. I, I, he's, he's playing tough basketball for us. He's really smart. But he brings a you know a presence about him too. He's talking, so he's a great addition to add to you know Reese, Petty, and Herb. Just those four guys are really all about winning this year, and he's added a lot to our program. Hey Nate, congrats on the win. I'm just curious as to what the locker room celebration was like after the game. Uh, I know it's just kind of getting over a hump. You guys hadn't won in Auburn Arena in a while. Uh, but just what was the locker room celebration like? What you'd imagine it'd be like. <laughs> they had the music dumping a little bit by the time I got back there. So we uh they were, they were happy, man. Those seniors hadn't won here their, their entire career. So that's you know, Petty Reese and Herb was it was 0, 0 for three coming in here. So to get one their senior year was huge, super happy. Guys, guys that it was their first time to play, I still think understood the the rivalry and oh, what a big game it was. And those guys were all happy too. I mean, just shoot is great when you win some close games. And we were down late too, you know, to be down late, come back, get the win. I'm not sure at what point we took the lead, but we, uh, you know, it's kind of going back and forth. That, that put back by Petty, I just, and he got a steal and some ball screen coverage there late too. He's, he's making winning plays. I mean, he didn't shoot the ball great today. And then, you know, what did he end up? One for seven from three shoot. He's liable to go five or seven or 10 for whatever the next game. But when he's making plays outside of making threes to win the game, that's when you know that they're all about winning. And I think they, they realize we got something special going. They realize how tight this group is. So when you get in there, I mean, it's a fun locker room to be in after the game. And they, they certainly made it fun for themselves. Hey, uh, Nate, has the sitting down of John and, and Rojas 
it seems like it's affected the team more so than just those two guys. As far as effort and maybe focus and intensity, is that wrong? No, I don't think so. I think they realize that everybody's got to be about the right stuff all the time. And even today, I mean, you know, we're not going to get into the weeds on all the, what, what happened. And really, to be honest with you, it wasn't even that big of a deal back when we did it. But we just had to get little stuff cleaned up. And my guess would be most places, maybe one of us has been them. But I, I felt like we had to set a tone that there's an acceptable level of behavior, an acceptable level of attention to detail, an acceptable all that. And I think the guys understand, like, we're serious about putting together a winning culture here. And that's why I'm just so happy for Petty because he's making all those winning plays. I mean, some of those steals, some of those stops late in the game were him. At halftime, he said, put me on Cooper. Like, I want the matchup. You know, he got the offensive put back late in the game. He was the only guy that crashed on our team. So, you know, to see him making all those plays. But, yeah, it def- you know, when, when you do anything to the team, everybody gets messages. So, I thought the camaraderie in the East Tennessee State game and everybody pulling for the win was great. But then when those guys came back in, they, they were perfect. Like, and they've been that way. And Petty's been a leader ever since he walked back in after Christmas. And he's been – I couldn't be happier, more proud for a guy than I am of him. And I think Rose giving us some real quality minutes. You know, he didn't have a great first half, but he, you know, he had that tough finish there in the second half. I think without his minutes tonight, we don't win the game. So I, I think he's giving us a lot of good stuff too right now. Tony, you're up now. Oh, thanks, Nate. Uh, forgive me if you already mentioned it, but uh, did Herb win the, the hard hat? And if so, just uh, what did uh, what did you think about his performance? Five steals, two blocks. Yeah, he won it. Uh, Bruner was right behind him, though. Br- Bruner had a lot of deflections and blocks, steals. So, like, uh, Bruner might have gotten more per minute, uh, but Herb won it. You know, we got to keep him in the game. It was good. He was not in foul trouble till the very end. You know, we got to uh, – because. You know, we eventually switched him over to Sharif, which kind of helped shore that up a little bit. But then, you know, then he picks up a third foul and a fourth foul, and now we had some issues. But yeah, Herb won it tonight. He's plus 19 when he's in the game. <laughs> There's only six minutes when he wasn't in the game, so figure that out. In those six minutes, he wasn't in the game. We're minus 15. That's uh, it's kind of valuable to keep him in the game. If that makes sense. So we got to. Uh, we got to find ways to keep him in, but yeah, I mean, seven to nine from the field and he, you know, he, he didn't have a ton of assists tonight, but he got the ball moving for us. You get in the paint, it starts spraying, guys are attacking, kicking. So, you know, our assisted turnover wasn't where we needed it to be. We were a little upside down in that category and our turnovers were a few too many, but, you know, it was Herb and Primo who other than those turnovers, they both played outstanding games. So hopefully we get these turnovers cleaned up here before we got to play at Kentucky. Thanks.